In 2020, I did a huge amplifier review where a team and I tested 10 different integrated amplifier offerings in the price category around 3,500 euros from major manufacturers. I link to the big test in the description. In the big test, there was one amp that always came among the top three favorites with all team members, despite at 2,500 euros being the cheapest in the field, namely the All Digital Techniques SUG700. Now Techniques has given this amp a rather significant update with the technology from the previously tested and very impressive SUR1000 high-end integrated amplifier. Be sure to check out that review too, link you find in the description. Despite the upgrade, Techniques is still offering the Mark II at the same price as the previous version. Wow! So naturally, I'm really excited to hear what the new improvements bring to this aggressive high value price point. The Mark II is a totally old school integrated amplifier on the surface. By old school, I mean that the amp does not have any streaming or smarty farty network stuff built in, thus requiring you to connect a suitable streamer and uh, sources. I have been testing them using a streamer from Blue Sound called the Note 2. It is both cheap, around 500 euros, I think, and it has a very good software package and support for everything I can think of, most notably Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect, and of course, the amazing tool for the music lover, Room. The Note 2 is perfect for the Mark II, and the small size means that it can easily sit beside the amp or behind it if you want to. It will connect digitally uh, via Toslink or coax cable and then go through the DAC in the amp. The G700 Mark II shines being a fully digital amplifier using a number of unique technologies that ensures perfect digital signal transmission from end to end. Things like the Geno jitter elimination engine that basically reclocks the digital signals uh, to kill jitter. And of course, LAPC, a DSP algorithm that flattens the impedance and phase response through an automated calibration process with the speakers connected. In this review, I used the Mark II mainly with a pair of the new Danish Scansonic HD M5B floor stander speakers sitting right here where the LAPC really improved the subjective listening experience, making the speakers sound tighter with more depth in the soundstage presentation. The effect can easily be auditioned by turning LAPC on and off from the remote. I also tried the system with my reference SBR1 speakers, and here the effect was not as uh, profound. In the back, we have a full suite of analog and digital inputs, only missing the balanced versions that you will typically find on more expensive kit. There's plenty to go around for most scenarios, including a dedicated preamplifier output, if you would like to hook up with another power amp. For everyone familiar with the old, basically looks the same, besides a little different feel and texture on the two knobs in the front. The rest of the changes happens on the inside. New also is adding a switchable MM and MC cartridge amplification through a new specially shielded phono stage also features a four-step gain adjustment, a subsonic filter, and you can even flip the face. The switching frequency of the digital amp has been increased from the conventional 100 kHz band to the 400 kHz band. The power supply technology incorporated in the reference class R1000 integrated amp has also been transferred, as well as the same Jan FET transistors in the output stage to deliver maximum performance from the new high-speed switching power supply. The whole thing sits in a three-section construction with individual shielding, effectively eliminating interference between circuit blocks together with a nice sturdy casing, suppressing vibration. 
As goes for the remote control, it comes with this very friendly remote with big clear buttons. It is made from plastic, thus not feeling quite as delicious as the similar remotes delivered with the reference class products. Fair enough, the big price difference taken into account. Daily use of the amplifier is really a joy. You just select the input you want on the input selector and turn up the volume. There's not much to that. The only thing I actually miss is the ability to disable unused inputs as well as naming the inputs that are being used. The DAC inside is extremely flexible and supports ultra high-end sample rates, including 22 MHz DSD playback via USB. Only thing we have to do without is built-in MQA decoding, something that seems to be reserved for the higher-end amplifiers at Technics. It all works very well. Changes are fast between any type of resolution. We also get a three-way tone control with adjustments for bass, mid-range and treble. The center frequencies are well chosen to my taste, adding real bass weight at 100 Hz, working the mid 1 kHz. The treble control adds air around 10 kHz. All working with a pretty wide filter around the center frequencies and allowing for plus minus 6 dB of gain, which should be plentiful for meaningful musical adjustments. And now to the party piece of the Mark II. When it comes to the sound, well, to my ears, the chosen one is among us. This must simply be the best 2500 euro amplifier that I have yet lent my ears to. It has this great sounding built-in DAC. It has a solid speaker control. It gives you fast dynamics and transparency and a tight dry bass. It's all there. It really shines in the top end where you usually will not hear resolution like this in this price class. I hear an effortless and nicely detailed sound with bite and a real truthful neutrality to it. That works so well with any airy genre of music that has natural instruments in it. The sound is also completely without any nasty edges to it, as long as the power is not challenged too much by two inefficient speakers. The 70 watts per channel is surprisingly effective though. The slight grittiness and edgy sound that can be heard in so many modern digital streaming amplifiers not to be found here. With both the speaker systems I tested the Mark II with, it did a really admirable job with the power available that is delivered with a enthusiasm and energy that is really inspiring. For AMP in this price class, it's simply something I would not expect. It's just stunning. For those that are serious about their vinyl, the newly added MC phono stage must be of special interest. How much is fair to expect from an integrated MC amplifier? I mean, decent external MC phono stages can easily cost around 500 to 1000 euros and up to much, much more. An example could be this Parasound Set Phono XRM that I use for reference. It's a great sounding example at around 800 euros. So how much can be expected from the MC phono stage in a 2500 euro integrated amplifier? Well, it turns out that a lot can be expected. I had an amazingly good listening experience with the original pressing of Pink Floyd's The Wall album on a Technics SL1200G mounted with a 500 euro Audio Technica AT33EV dual moving call cartridge. With that combination on the Scansonic HD speakers, the sound was Big, smooth and warm, not at all in the vicinity of sounding tinny. I got nice and full sounding bass and a white deep soundstage and really impressive dynamics coming out of that vinyl. It's not hard to love the Technics SUG700 Mark II. Maybe we can hate the name. 
But Technics has made all the right choices, focusing on the sound experience by keeping all things streamy and appy away from the amp, thus creating a very high value for money amplifier that will make your foot tap and do impressive work of any challenging music. With the G700 Mark II, Techniques proves that fully digital technology done right has so many advantages. In short, there's a new king in the 2500 to 3500 euro range with some real improvements over the previous already great sounding Mark I. The Mark II simply moves up, providing high-end feels at a premium price. This is achieved in the right way, in my opinion, with that sharp focus on what is important for sound while keeping the feature list pretty short. I believe this is the amp everybody else should be measuring sound performance against in this price range. When combining it with a streamer like the Blue Sound Note, then you got a hell of a system at around 3,000 euros. Congratulations, Techniques. I think you got a winner here. Be sure to check out my review of the R1000 that takes the vinyl experience to the digital age, but only after you gently tap, 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 tap that like button and subscribe if you would like more content like this. Until next time, just listen.